Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In today's video we're going to be dealing with C-type strings. In other words, we've talked about how strings are really char arrays, but dealing with them explicitly as char arrays instead of dealing with them as strings allows us to use a different set of methods. And we call these C-type strings because these are the way that the strings are referenced in the C programming language. That's the precursor to C++. So what we're going to do is create a new file up here. So file new. We're going to call this file stringmethods.cpp. So save it as string methods, string methods.cpp. And we're going to include IO stream. We're going to include string, but really just using this for one line. But I'm going to include a file called CString, which is actually going to deal with most of the methods we're going to be talking about in today's video. I also need to make sure I'm using namespace standard and our usual int main with a return zero. So what we have done before is we've declared strings like string str gets a test string. And of course that would compile with no problem. So let's just compile that just to make sure that works. And that just declares it. And then what we talked about two videos ago is we talked about how to create a char array, an explicit char array out of this using the const char pointer to s, which is going to get the memory address of the zeroth element of that array. And so now I've got a pointer that points explicitly to the beginning of that char array. Remember it starts at the index of zero and keeps going until we reach the next null. So I can do this just explicitly, kind of treating the string literal exactly the same way as we had an initializer list. So I could say const char pointer to t gets another test string. Or what I can do is I can just create char arrays the way we did in our previous video. So I can say a char array u equals this initializer list, which is the ultimate test string. Or I could do char v, which is going to be another one that we're going to be using, which is essentially a long and broken string, broken by spaces. So these are all different types of strings. Only the first one is a C++ string. The rest of these are what we call C-type strings. So the first thing I want to talk about is in our video two times ago, we talked about how we could print out str.length. And what that would do is that would print out the length of my string str. So if I compile and run, it tells me that the string, a test string, is 14 characters long. What I can also do is I could see out, excuse me, let me get to the my file. In order to use the C type string, I would do something like this. I would say str len of s. And what that does is that goes up to my character array s and finds out the length of that string. So again, if I compile and run, I end up with the exact same output. Notice that this string.length, this is a function that belongs to the string. The string is essentially acting as a class and it has a method, which we call a function. Whereas strlen is actually a function in the C string file that requires a string as a parameter. And what you'll see with these C type strings is all of these functions require a parameter, at least one of which is going to be the string that we're interested in. And you may remember when we first started talking about functions 
how these C functions can pass by value or by reference. And in passing by reference, they can change one or more of the parameters through their actions. What we'll find is that when we want to change a C type string, it needs to be one of the parameters that we've passed as reference, and it's usually the first parameter. So when I'm dealing with C type strings, if I want to find the length of a C type string, I'm going to use str length. Now, you may remember that we also had uh, size of, which we could deal with. So I could do size of s divided by size of s sub 0. And that was also a way that we had to figure out the length of an array. That works for any array. It doesn't just work for strings. You will find, though, that this gives us a different answer than what we're expecting. And that's because chars, we're still kind of in this quasi, is it ASCII, is it Unicode, because of when C++ was developed. C++ was actually developed much long, much long ago, longer before the Unicode standard was developed. And so it's not going to give us the result that we're expecting. That's why you want to use either length or strlen, depending if you're dealing with actual string objects or if you're dealing with char arrays. So that's the first method that I wanted to talk about. This is bad, and we're going to get rid of it. Okay. Second thing that I want to do is I want to talk about string comparison. You may recall the compare to method that we used whenever we wanted to compare objects. And one of the ways that strings were compared is lexicographically. In other words, not just in alphabetical order, but in the order determined by Unicode. That's how Java worked. So a capital A had a Unicode value of 65, a lowercase a had a Unicode value of 97, and because 65 is less than 97, the capital A came first lexicographically. Those values, 65 and 97, those actually date back to ASCII as well. And so that same relationship is going to work for us. So if I was to do something like int comp gets strcmp, which allows me to compare two C-type arrays. So if I wanted to compare S with T, then I see out comp. What I'll actually find is that because S is a capital A and T starts with a lowercase a, S should come first. And I find this negative 32, which tells me that it's 32 characters before the lowercase a. The capital A is 32 characters before the lowercase a. 97 minus 65 is 32. If I were to change the order of this, if I was to put T first, then S, compile and run, then I would find the positive 32. In other words, T comes after S. So what I could do, instead of just C outing comp, I could say if comp is less than 0, then that means that the first string comes first. So I could C out, in this case, S, if I go back to my original configuration. So let's say I wanted to configure the term in S and U. Else, and if I hit this, then the second string comes first. So C out U. And then I can just do a straight C out comes first lexicographically. And so what this allows me to do is this allows me to directly compare S, which is a test string, with U, which is our ultimate test string. And I find out that a test string comes first lexicographically because A comes before U in the alphabet. If I were to compare T and V, and then print out T or V and do the exact same compile and output, I would find a long and, un, a long and broken string broken by spaces comes first because the ASCII value of a space is the same as the Unicode value, 32. And the ASCII value of N 
is going to be 15 above 65 or 80. So a space comes before 32 is less than 80, and so this string comes next. So I have this strcmp, the string compare, which allows me to compare to C-type strings. These do have to be char arrays in order for me to compare them. And so that's why it's important to know how to take a string and actually convert it to a char array the way that we did up here. So that's the second thing that I want to talk about in today's video. The last thing that I want to talk about today is the idea of taking a string like this, a long and broken string broken by spaces, and actually breaking it up into its components. In other words, tokenizing a string, breaking it up into tokens, the space, the stuff that's between the spaces. And so what we're going to do is create a string tokenizer. So I'm going to create a char array or a char pointer called token. And I'm going to set it equal to strtok, where my first parameter is v, that string it is so long and broken. And my second parameter is the delimiter. In other words, I want to break this apart with spaces. Now, I could deal with a list that had comma separated values, and I could have comma be this string here that's determining how I'm breaking up these spaces. But what I can do with this is I can set up a loop and, and say while token is not equal to null. Now, when I talk about null, I'm talking about a null pointer, basically a pointer to a zero memory address, which is how C++ deals with uh, objects that don't exist. And we've dealt with null pointer exceptions before in Java. But while this is not equal to null, I want to go ahead and print the result of this. So I'm going to see out token, and I'm going to do an end line, and then I'm going to get the new token. So I'm going to say token is going to get the string tokenizer for a I'm going to put null as this parameter, basically saying take the string we just dealt with, and I still want to separate with spaces. And it's going to keep doing this until I hit my next space, or until I run out of spaces. So this loop will eventually terminate when I run out of strings that are separated by spaces. In other words, when I hit the word spaces in V. So if I save this, compile, and run, then I'm going to see a long and broken string broken by spaces. In other words, as I had this spaced out, it's going to list these separately. Did I say that was the last thing? There's one more thing I want to say, and that's the idea of concatenation. But, you know, sometimes I don't want to concatenate the entire string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more string. I'm going to create a C-type string called output. And I have no idea what's going to be in the string. All I know is that I want to set aside 15 spaces for it. And I'll tell you, talk about why in just a moment. But I'm going to take output, and I'm going to use string cat concatenization. So str in cat. And the in is important because the in tells us that we are going to be doing a certain number of spaces. Now, my first parameter is going to be output, which is my target. My second parameter is the string I want to take stuff from. And my third parameter is how many chars I want to take. I want to take four chars from S, from the beginning of S, and put it at output. And I can do the same thing with this output V, or let's say T, and 5. And I can do strn cat with output u and 6. And if I was to go ahead and see out output, what I would find is I would have the first four characters of s followed by, oops, what did I do wrong? Can I convert char pointer to that? Oh, this should just be a char array. I don't want a pointer to a char array. I just want a char array. Okay. And so what I see is A space TE, there's the first four characters of a test string. And then I have ANOTH, there's the first five characters of another test string. And then I see ULTIMA, which is the first six characters of our other test string. 
Now, if I don't want to start at the beginning, let's say I wanted to start at the third letter here, remember that I can pass this by reference and I should be able to access starting at the third. So I see there's A space TE for test, then I see another, but I skip the ANO, so I see the THER space, there's the five characters. And if I wanted to get farther along in ultimate, I could do ampersand U sub 10 and make sure that I get the six characters there. So I can compile and run. And so here I see my test string, but I just see est st. So this allows me to get substrings at a particular starting point and for a particular length. And you may remember when we were dealing with Java, that's how substrings were. We had a starting index and then a certain length, the number of chars that we were dealing with. And this string catenization will actually build a string using these pieces. So four things that we were talking about with our uh, C-type string methods. We have string len, which tells us how the length of a string using the parameters of our char array. We had string comparison, strcmp, which allowed us to compare two strings, very much like the compare to that we saw in our other C-type languages. Uh, we saw the string tokenizer, strtok, which allowed us to break apart a string into pieces based on some delimiting parameter, some string that would be our partition. And then we had strncat, string concatenization, which allowed us to concatenate a few letters from a given string, either starting at the initial position of the string or starting at some arbitrary position in the string. Now, the C string library actually has a lot more methods to deal with C strings, but this just gives us a taste of what's going on there. And if you want to, you can look at a good reference and see all the different C string methods there are. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.